All right, hey YouTube. Um, guess it's a little update on my sand rail. Um, I'm converting it uh, to stock bug form, I guess you can say. I bought a stock pea shooter exhaust. Um, the actual you know, parts right here where the pea shooters come out, I have those. I'm just gonna get them rewelded on. Um, and uh, I also bought the stock a stock 34 pick 3 carburetor. Uh, an original made in Germany Solex pick 3. I have a problem with uh, vacuum leak on the throttle shaft bushings, but uh, you know, just it's not that bad. I mean, at least not for me. Anyways, the intake manifold that I have on it is missing. Somebody had cut off the heat riser tubes and I also bought a stock bug muffler as it don't sit very low and it has the correct style um, heat riser setup for preheat um, most aftermarket headers either don't have them or if they do they're not uh, they're not set up properly to bring good heat to the center section well it runs like this with this manifold. It runs pretty good. Um, I have a pretty big, uh, I have a pretty decent stumble though or hesitation if I stab the throttle, and I'm pretty sure that's from the leaking throttle shaft bushings. But it could also be because I'm not getting any heat to it. So, you know, as you can see, I have a dual port engine. So I bought this. Well, okay. Before I go any further, this particular intake manifold has a number on it. You can't see it, maybe, but it's. I'll read it to you. 113 129 701 AG. Looks like 701, or it could be 707. 701. Okay. AG. So the AG. I'm assuming it's a you know the series of engine. This is a. What is this? An AE series engine. And uh, so yeah, I bought this intake manifold. Okay. You look at it to the naked eye. It's a dual port intake manifold. So, we're not in Europe. I have a dual port engine. This is a dual port intake manifold. Okay, it's going to work. This has a 113-129-701-AH code on it. But I didn't really think much of it. I bought it mainly because it has the, the tubes... It still has the tubes, uh, the heat riser tubes um, uh, attached to it. They were clogged, so I just drilled some holes right here, and I, you know, patched them back up, and you know they're clear now. All right. Now, this is this is my question, or not my question, but I guess I have something that might be from Europe. This is meant to mount a the new, new replacement H3031 picked carburetors or the 30 picked one carburetors or you know those small carburetors I did not even pay attention to that because this is a dual port intake manifold so it wasn't until I realized that when I started putting this on that these ends right here I guess are a little smaller and they fit a little bit more loose and the end castings then that intake manifold did. So I was like, okay, you know, whatever. I'll just clamp the tube, the, the what do you call it, the, the intake manifold boots, you know. And, you know, okay, you know, they won't, it won't leak. Um, I was like, whatever, it's like that. It wasn't until I actually came to mount the carburetor onto the manifold that I realized, what the fuck? So I know in Europe they made 1300 cc dual port engines which I'm assuming this is what this is for because this doesn't look like a single port intake manifold that was like you know cut and modified and shortened or whatever to fit uh, a 1600 cc dual port engine so my question is even though these tubes right here I'm assuming they're I guess they're called runners I'm not sure because the the heat riser tubes they mount you know just in the right spot. Um, if I just clamp the intake manifold boots on, you know, real tight to avoid any vacuum leaks, and I 
put this on my 1600cc dual port engine with an you know the modern replacement H3031 carburetor will it work? I'm pretty sure it would as long as I have the right jetting for the for the engine but the thing is that this was made for a 1300cc dual port will it matter if this is a 1600 dual port? again I hear that the H3031 replacement you can mount them on these manifolds with an adapter and from what I hear they work pretty good on these engines on the 1600cc's at least uh, you know given they're jetted right but they also have you know I guess that part the, the, where the, the boot is mounted to the smaller tube I guess that would be the runner that is a little bit fatter on this manifold than on this manifold this one the outer diameter is a little bit smaller so would that really make a difference would that starve this engine you know given I do correct jetting um, so that's my question um, because I got this manifold for cheap five bucks I just cleared out the runners and I mean the heat riser tubes and painted it up and it's a, I mean it's a good manifold it's just or you know I also heard something that I think in the US and California only there was I think 72 and 73 or maybe 71 and 72 that they used I think a 1600 dual port but they used uh, I think I'm not sure if I heard this correctly the 3031 uh, picked carburetors or you know the, the smaller carburetor and they were dual port engines so if that's the case I'm assuming that yes in, in that case if I get the right size carburetor I can put that on that engine and I'll be okay because I know they don't make adapters to put the bigger carburetor on the smaller manifolds so yeah but this I thought it was kind of odd because I, I'd, I'd it's a dual port intake manifold you know here in the US as far as I know all 1600 cc's were dual port not the 1300s that was a European thing so uh, like I said that's my question and I want to use it because it's got good preheat so if I buy a 30 picked carburetor will it work with that manifold on this engine uh, I'm almost a you know 100% sure that it would but if anybody ever else out there done that but yeah as far as I'm concerned though I know I just wanted to get big old exhaust out of the way I wanted a stock carburetor I, I got this stock muffler for 20 bucks just the only thing is that you know these are off I can weld them back on if I really want to I have them um, I can just run it like that it's got the proper preheat to heat up the center section already you know I don't have to get it by a header and have it properly done you know weld one piece over here to the end to the collector or whatever it was just simple and basic and even with this setup right here it's, it still seems pretty responsive if anything it actually seems a little more responsive than it used to be with the the what do you call it um uh, uh weber progressive that i had on there i'm also eventually i'm gonna paint that black i just want it to look like a stock engine you know i had to do a lot of grinding and stuff to my gener uh, alternator when the alternator goes bad i'm just gonna get a generator for it uh, and the degree pulley I'll eventually um, replace with the stock pulley like I said I just want this to look like a stock engine I'm, I'm even thinking about do, redoing the whole Sandra as far as like you know putting drums in the back again maybe um, painting this thing like just like a flat black rather than the red that it is um, I'll leave these wagon wheels uh, I'll probably I'm not sure if I can uh, you know because this is just spindle mount wheels if I can just get the you know a wide five uh, you know just a drum that's like basically no good no more and just mount the drums directly to the spindle and then just put you know stock smoothies on there if I can do that I'm pretty sure I can um, as far as I remember when I had my bug the drum was held in place directly onto the spindle so if I just buy the drum you know I'm pretty sure I can do that uh, it doesn't need brakes in the front I mean I didn't have it probably leave the discs in the back but other than that you know I'll probably just do that I just I just I just want it to look kind of like more I don't know simple I guess it's just it's just me I don't know what is it with me wanting to look my engine to look more stock but oh you know I even want to get an oil bath air filter I don't know if that's wise for off-roading though I hear they filter better but 
I'm not sure as far as, uh, I mean, I'm not crazy bashing on this. I mean, I have done it before, but, um, it, would that be a good air filter to use? Um, as, assuming it still has the horse hair inside and I clean it out properly and, you know, I just like the, I just like the look of a stock VW engine, stock bug engine. It's just, they look cool to me. So. My question regards this, though, I guess. Will a uh, bug oil bath air f filter work decent on an off-road machine? And will this manifold work as long as I clamp it really good at the ends right here with a H3031 carburetor? Any info, you guys? That would be cool. Thank you.